What's up, guys? Today we have a very, very exciting topic of discussing what happened to the Atlas Pumpers. Now facing an SEC lawsuit and criminal charges for using social media to pump and dump stocks. We also go over the FTX scandal and the overall market. This one is a jam-packed podcast, so you'll for sure want to listen up, stick around, and enjoy. Cheers, guys, and let's get into it. What's going on, guys? We're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, today, we have a fiery one that I'm excited to uh, start. So, Alex, I'll kind of pass it off to you, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, so I'm sure you guys have noticed or heard in the news lately, that there was a massive $100 million pump and dump scam that just got exposed that just got blown up into massive proportions. And the crazy part is we're going to explain everything, guys. We're going to explain, you know, who these people are, what they did, how they did it, what's going to happen, and kind of the future of trading because of it. But my thing that surprised me the most is how fast that these people got caught because the saying is the wheels of justice grind slowly. And these people were scamming during 2020 and 2021 and 2022, they got caught. Usually it takes until 2020, like 2030 for these people to get caught. So I think that's very interesting how a lot of these pump and dump schemes are getting caught faster. And yeah, so I thought that was just kind of crazy is how fast they got them. So a little bit of backstory on these things is these were a couple of normal dudes uh, probably never traded before in their lives, or if they did trade, they didn't really make much money trading. And then when the pandemic started and everyone was locked in at home, a lot of people started making Discord chats. They started making Telegram chats. They started making these private chats where, you know, they would just use it as a way to communicate and talk. Eventually, those private rooms became free rooms where you could join as much free, doesn't matter. And they got slowly filled with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people just looking for free signals and free alerts. Now, these people that were doing the scheme, you know, were pretty well aware of what they were doing. So they would accumulate stocks early. Let's say they would buy stock on Monday. They would tell all their friends about it on Tuesday. On Wednesday, they would be tweeting it. And then as soon as that tweet volume came in, as soon as people started finding out, stock would go up, go up, go up. They would say they're adding more, and instead they would just be selling their position. There were very many pump and dumps, as you probably can remember from the last years. CEI was a massive one. DATS was a massive one. And these people just cleaned up. They were pretty much stock manipulating, right? They would buy stock early. They would pump it up to other people. And they would dump the stock when they were telling people to buy more. They said that they believed in the company. They said that it's going to go to the moon and they didn't even have any shares of it, right? So stock manipulation is obviously illegal. You can't do that. We see stock manipulation every single day in our industry on lower scales with screen share rooms, with email alert rooms or whatever type of alert rooms. But a lot of those people, although they're making a lot of money, they're pretty small fish, right? And these people in the course of two years made over a hundred million dollars pump and dumping stocks. They would buy Rolls Royces. They would buy houses. They would buy McLarens. They would buy diamond jewelry. They would buy watches. They buy everything that you could possibly imagine. And the craziest part is they would brag that the SEC can't get them. They would brag that they're the number one pumpers in the world. And I don't know if that's just ignorance. I don't know if it's just stupidity, but money, if when you make that type of money really quickly, you almost feel invincible. You feel like no one can ever get you. And that's why I was so surprised that they got caught so quickly. And maybe if they didn't buy all this shit and maybe if they didn't show off all this shit and do all these crazy things, that hey, they might've been at least okay for a little bit longer, but... The they were main, tagging the SEC. In they're their tagging the SEC. They're like, I'm <laughs> SEC's most wanted bitch or some, some stupid yeah. shit or whatever it is. But I mean, what we'll do, guys, we'll post the full lawsuit in the description in case you guys want to read. It's like a 45-page lawsuit. And, you know, they would message each other and say, all right, guys, like we're going to be pumping this today. Yeah. Uh, these guys are already idiots. Uh, we're taking money from stupid people. Like, it's just they knew very clearly what they were doing. They did not think they would get caught. These guys had a 400-day win streak. They would be making a million dollars a week, not losing. 
and bragging and bragging and bragging. And to be honest, guys, like we knew everyone knew that these guys were pumping, yeah. but on the other side, we're sure in the hell out of the stocks they're pumping. Some of my biggest trades this year, uh, last year, DATS, 170,000 in one day. CEI, 69,000 in one day. I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars. People have made millions of dollars betting on the other side of these pumpers. So, I mean, before we continue into, you know, what happens next, I want to kind of open it up to you guys and kind of, if I missed anything or if you guys want to comment on anything, it's just, it's wild. No, I think, uh, I think these guys were definitely the most successful pumpers in like the modern trading era in like the last like 20 years. Like obviously there were like the boiler rooms in the eighties and the nineties. And you know, there's always been stock pumpers going back a hundred years, but these guys in such a short period of time were able to accumulate. Was it a hundred million they accumulated? Is that the, the number? That I think it totally happened? made a hundred million. And I think their discord chat room, had anywhere between two to 300,000 free people. Which is insane. And it's like, for them, it was the perfect storm, right? Because it was COVID, met lockdowns, met people working from home, met trading became cool, and then the pumpers just went nuts, right? Yeah. And and I think that on the flip side, like you said, it led to a lot of small cap to mid cap traders having the best years of their lives in the trading, in the market, because there was so much crazy volatility. And you said there's like pumpers today. Like there are pumpers every single day. Like every on- single day, bro. Every single day there are people yeah. pumping and pumping and pumping. And it's yeah. Go on. James. Every some- no, no, no. Every, every day there's pumpers and stuff, but these guys brought a liquidity and a volume that I've in five years have never seen. It would be like, they would get involved. The stock was gone and it was, it was violent rips. So it was, it was cool to see. And, and same thing. I think, like you said, times are just moving faster that they caught them a lot quicker. I mean, it took them five years, I think, to nail Bell for it, like after he stepped down and, you know, it's just, it's crazy to yeah. see, like you said, in a year and maybe it is them taunting. Maybe it is the guys, you know, flaunting their, I mean, you guys have to look up their, their pages. It's, it would blow your mind, you know, as before they delete everything, but it is interesting to see. Yeah. And I also think that, these guys also still, even though after the lawsuit, like I'm just, I have the lawsuit like in front of me right here and I'm just reading it. And like one of the guys was like, get caught. We're, we're robbing effing idiots of their money. Like they did not care about their followers at all. And even to this day, if you go through the comment section, if you read stuff, there's still people defending them going like, oh, why are they going to jail? They didn't do anything that bad. You know, they're not that great. or yeah. They are great. Like they still have a loyal fan base, which is actually crazy to me. When you scroll through the Discord, I'd say, you know, even even beforehand or like even before this drop, they still had loyal people there. They still do have those loyal people, you know. It's like kind of like... Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know how to say it, but it's like, you know, you're still, you're still like a fan of like R. Kelly, even after all the <laughs> shit that happened to him dropped, you know, like, it's like, you know, you're still, you're still. But that's like, the thing, man. That's the thing that their, <clears throat> their client base is garbage, man. It's people that's yeah. stupid, bro. It's people that believe in this nonsense. And that's, it just blows my mind that they were able to amass so many degenerates yeah. that would buy anything that they said. Oftentimes what happened was it would spike up instantly, crash instantly. They would lose all their money, but because the room was free, it just kept churning and churning and getting more and more and more and more and more and more people because their business model was not to charge because they can make way more money pump and dumping stocks. And going on to the next thing about this is a lot of other people in our industry have been caught for stock manipulation. It's a very, very common thing. It's like, it's almost that thing that's like sweeped under the rug because if you have enough money, uh, essentially you just pay a fine and you're done with it. You know, one of the biggest ones that got caught was Raging Bull. They paid $10 million. Another one was, I think, Warrior Trading. They got, they paid $3 million. And now this one with um, Atlas, they are, I think, going to be made an example out of. Because this whole FTX stuff is going on, and if that's like another thing that we're going to be talking about. But like, in my opinion, these guys were so well politically connected that like they're not going to get anything more than a slap on the wrist. Yeah. And because they're not going to get anything more than a slap on the wrist, I think the SEC is going to make an example out of this hundred million dollar pump scheme because they need something to take attention away, and. The perfect thing is sending these guys to jail. So I think 
based on the times, based on what's been going on, there is a very high probability that these people not only are going to give back all the money plus more and see some jail time, which is crazy because now that should make other pumpers, other social media influencer pumpers be scared to hell because now they're next, right? There's so many other discord rooms. There's so many other pumpers. And the reality is a lot of these guys can't make money trading and that's why they are pumping. But you know, for us, that's on the other side of the trade that makes money when they pump things. I mean, it's a little bit unfortunate that we're losing pretty much easy money, right? It's easy money. It's very easy money to bet against these pumpers once the trend has changed. And, you know, this is an opportunity for everyone to kind of clean up before it's all got, right? Yeah, it's true. And I I think pumping is kind of weird because there's like, in my opinion, there's two kinds, right? There's like the illegal pumping, which is like what these guys got knocked for. And then there's the guys who actually run like financing and, you know, like they're like stock promoters who basically run up the price of a stock to let them dilute later on. So at least in small caps, we won't lose. We'll never lose that. Companies always put out bullshit PRs, which is their own way of doing it. But it's true. It's kind of sad to see uh, that we're going to lose a lot of volume. But yeah. on the flip side, hopefully a lot of these people who lost money or saw that now understand like it's time to invest in real education and like that there's a m- millions of dollars to be made, but it's like focus on the right way to trade. And I kind of wanted to touch on the FTX and you said a little tiny bit, but I just wanted to say, I, I have a feeling that they're going to use this. Like they've always said crypto is unregulated. So I think they're going to show that how regulated the stock market is and they're going to say in like Congress and all that, they're going to say, well, now the crypto market has to go to this regulation because, see, we nail pumpers here and we're going to nail pumpers in crypto yeah. and then we're going to nail all that. So I think it's going to be just a huge. Yeah, segment. I also think like, you know, another like uh, uh, person like defending people who have done shitty things is Kevin O'Leary right now. <laughs> you know, he, he's out there. Literally saying like, oh, well, we don't have all the facts yet. We don't know everything. Like, you know, like I would potentially invest in this guy again. Yeah, bro. If you get paid $15 million, bro, no. what the hell else are you yeah, going to do? He got paid $15 million. He lost around $15 million. So technically it's a wash, you know, yeah. like technically. So I he mean, got paid in FTT. Right? Am, am I wrong? He didn't get paid. It was no money. I have no idea. I think, it was I think he got paid in the overall token. Token. So he got paid. I think but pretty much they gave him free money. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. the, but the fact is with the FTX stuff there, they scammed, not even scammed, they, I don't know if you guys have ever seen Inventing Anna on Netflix, right? If you haven't, yeah. I do recommend it. But like that, you basically lied to so many people, but somehow through being persuasive and having money, which was actually just customer funds, they managed to persuade people to thinking they were the real deal. How many people of large, like Kevin O'Leary is not a small investor. Yeah. I think he's worth like a couple hundred million. Yeah got this guy and he's standing by he had no idea until the last final day that this company was insolvent and that there was no money but he's now on tv crying to congress saying like we were scammed the company is was put out of business on purpose by cz yeah i think it's also interesting to note that when they give someone that ftt token it's almost like giving them stock in ftx right that's essentially what it is so it's like stock in the company so i think in scenarios like that when someone like O'Leary or a venture or whatever sees that they're getting stock, they know that the end game is to IPO that shit and then sell their stock for 10, 20, 30 X profits. O'Leary got 15 million, probably thinking that on the IPO day, that 15 million would be a hundred million. Right. Yeah. So when that happens, that kind of, that greed forces them to look the other way. Essentially, you never know. Maybe sure. Maybe he didn't know that the books were insolvent, but you know, he could have probably done a better job, you know, at least double checking because, hey, if I say, hey, I got a hundred million in my bank account. Cool. That sounds good. I'm cool with that. But like, I could maybe only have a thousand dollars in my bank. You don't know. And like, you just take their word for it because you're like, oh, I'm a shareholder now. They want to lie to me. I'm a shareholder. You know, yeah. so like there's always has to be a second layer of, you know, maybe you get someone to audit it. But then if you get someone to audit it, they're going to say, you know, we don't want you on our team. You don't trust us. It's a it's a whole, it's like the Bernie Madoff scam. The Bernie Madoff scam was if you leave or you pull out money, you will never be allowed to get into the fund again. And the fund was making like 17% a year. So it was in their best interest to not question anything, to not pull out money. Because if you did that, you're out of the circle. 
So it's probably the same shit's happening here. That was like, um, they asked uh, Chamath there. Remember, I don't know if you listened to that podcast. Yeah. But they asked him, they were like, they were, they, they were looking for investment into FTX. And he sent them like a, a page saying like what they need to do to become basically like a, like a serious company as big yeah. as they were. He's like, these are the steps you need to take. And uh, basically one of them was like having like an accounting firm, um, having a board, having all this stuff. And yeah, yeah. they literally sent back a message that said, like, fuck you. Yeah. Like, it was like a yeah. literal email back to them. So like, and bro, it, how can you not like when you're at that point where your company's valued like fucking 40 billion, right? It's oh, a yeah. 40 billion dollar company. You could say fuck you to anyone you want. Yeah. And it's just funny it because at that at that point, Chamath was probably like, wait, what the fuck? Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> and he said yeah. that. He actually, they said, a lot of these guys have said they felt stupid the whole time because they were watching people make money, IPO and coins, all this crazy shit. But I don't know. I feel like now is kind of the end of that cycle. And I feel like maybe we're just starting to unravel. But as far as like, I feel like it's kind of like a, a poetic justice way to end the crazy bull market that we had. And like almost like really significant, like, signify that we're deep in a bear market or in like a downturn because think about the last 10 years a lot of people have made a lot of money and i think these last two to two to three years because of covid accelerated fast money from pumpers from yeah. from tokens from blockchain all that shit and now all these people are getting like nailed and pegged down so i think i think it's i think of- eventually COVID. the cycle repeats bro the cycle repeats it's like humans are naturally greedy so like something interesting bro is like like the currency stuff so like the way usually it works is currency is usually backed by something physical like gold. And every time that the currency gets debacked by whatever, they say they deback it or they they don't make it uh, double checked by anything. Eventually the currency implodes because humans should keep printing, printing, printing money. It's unlimited money. And eventually the currency becomes worthless. It happens every single time in human history. Started with the Romans and just kept going and going and going. The first time it was ever de-pegged or de, uh, de-synced with gold or whatever it was or whatever they... 1971 and Nixon did They it. eventually, humans just like, they just keep printing money and they just keep ruining it because eventually that currency becomes useless. Same thing in the stock market. Eventually, there's going to come a group of new pumpers, not, not on Discord, maybe they're going to be on TikTok and they're just going to yeah. be pumping shit nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. They're going to make the next $100 million. The cycle is going to repeat because humans are always greedy. Humans will always be looking for signals. They'll always be looking for alerts. And they're always going to be looking for the easy money. They're going to be looking for the lottery ticket. And eventually, whoever sells them that lottery ticket will make a substantial amount of money. The people seeking those lottery tickets will lose a substantial amount of money. And the people like us that bet against them, We'll have a significant amount of money with no jail time because we're not doing anything sketchy. So the cycle will always repeat. Humans will always remain greedy. And our job as professional traders is to find where those pockets of greed are. And if warranted, to make money on the way down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, pumpers have been around since literally the beginning of, of the stock market. You can go back to the Rose Bubble. I mean, I'm sorry, Tulip Mania. You can go back to the 1900s. Guys like Jesse Livermore were always talking about pumpers. So you're right. It's always going to be there. Um, whether it's just the how the message is delivered is just different. I think this is one of the biggest I've ever seen of like people getting nailed. And I'm very curious to see kind of how it all unravels, um, especially with, again, so much involved in the media. Um, and I know it's big because I have people who are not traders messaging me about it being like, Oh my God, did you see this shit? I actually was scrolling on TikTok and I saw it too. So it's like, this one's pretty fucking big and it's kind of, it has all the, it has all the signs. It's social media influencers. It's the Rolls Royces. It's hundred million dollars. It's pandemic. It's this, it's that it's, it has everything that it needs to be to be a big story. And because it's a big story, it will have a big outcome. And I'm very curious to see during this lawsuit, which other people were involved, right? Because I'm positive that these pumps didn't just originate from one Discord room. I'm almost positive it was a bunch of other rooms working together as well that we'll probably find out about uh, during court. Because what they'll do is to protect their ass, they're going to throw someone else under the bus. Yeah, And I'm pretty sure there's going to be some notable, reputable people that are probably going to be involved in this as well. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, yeah. there were there there have always been like messages leaked between like uh, like on Twitter between <laughs> yeah. like other people who have rooms. Like I don't know if you remember that in like 2020, yep. 2021, where they were leaking messages about other people who had. And it's all going to come out, man. It's all going to come out and we're going to see it. And it's just going to be interesting. But what this tells me, like you said, James, is like this is this is pretty much the bear market, right? This is where we're at. And, you know, I know you said that you think it's going to probably be a big cycle of, you know, just nothingness. And that is true. But, I mean, for now, bro, goddamn, like this is like, it's just crazy. It's just crazy yeah. because, you know, we don't know how long it's going to last. And, you know, we don't know how much money we're going to make during that time but in the meantime there's still opportunity like this week that we're recording this podcast we have tons of runners tons of moves yeah. tons of everything it's right? been so a good like, week exactly good so right we're, we're pretty much chilling it's just it's just very it's very crazy what's happening and again we'll post the full um lawsuit in the description so you guys can read it but they're literally like for cei they bought two million shares at like 50 cents a share and the stock went as high as like four bucks was that their biggest pump? Wasn't there one that wasn't even crazy? Was I forget they had another one. That Wish was, was another one that was crazy. Wish I remember that it was like daily. I remember. Yeah. It. And Alex, there was a period of time where you were hit, you were hitting it every single day. It was <laughs> like every morning it'd say, "Up, oh, buying more, buying, still buying, still buying," and it was yep. every single day. But something I think that's that's really important to like note too is like you're not a real trader, in my opinion, or like a real like risk manager if your entire like process revolves around these pumpers like the one benefit to like what we all do is like we don't need pumpers it's helpful and it's almost like a subset like niche that we get to trade but like yeah. we like like if they never pumped another stock again it wouldn't, wouldn't affect it it wouldn't affect what yeah. we do it's just an added bonus like it's like every day you make a hundred dollars a day at your day job but you find a ten dollar bill on the floor you just pick up a ten dollar bill every yeah. day bow says it every year he's like i should be sending these guys like like a bottle of Dom Perry because they pay yeah, for all bills. I'll let right? Dom Perry a little bit more than that, I think. Seriously, I mean, I don't know. I think I think we're in a weird position where, like, yes, we're in a weird bear market. We're in this little rally right now, but also small caps are hot. And, like, all these pumpers are kind of dead right now. So we're still yeah. getting opportunity. I mean. See, it, I just think that the pumpers, like, uh, like the one that we have now, for instance, like, I was saying this to James the other day, like he just, his approach is like very bad as far as pumping goes, you know, like stocks at highs and like, he's looking to like, hey, he doesn't know how to trade. These guys don't know how to trade, bro. So it's like, it's crazy. Cause I was saying to James the other day, like, oh, like what's, what's Farmeran? Like, what's he doing? James like, oh, he pumped this. I'm like, what the fuck? Why? Like, well, their pump? goal, bro, is to find the lightest volume stock with the lowest flow possible, get in as early as possible, sell as fast as possible. And the reality is, bro, like, I thought, I honestly, and again, things might change, but I thought these guys were going to at least take it a little bit slower after seeing this shit. But I think that they're just, people are just greedy, bro. Like, I still see it on Twitter all the time. People are just pumping shit. I see everything that people are just doing shit because, like, that's all they know. And without that, they can't make money. So, I mean, look, this was bound to happen. They were bound to get caught. It was only a matter of time. They were too big not to get caught. It's just, to me, funny how invincible they thought they were, how they were taunting the regulators, how they were bragging nonstop, and those jails, those uh, the lawsuit, the court time, everything. Be pretty good if they start streaming that shit. If they, you know how like they had the Johnny Depp Amber yeah. Heard shit yeah. on TV. They should put this shit on TV, bro. Yeah, they should put this on Twitch. Away from FTX, they I, would, I would not put it past these guys to come in with their like roll, their crazy watches on and like all that shit. Because I think that kind of money can make you ignorant and it can make you feel like you said invincible and that no yeah. one can touch you. It's just, but they loved the attention. And well, he tweeted this morning, "My movie gonna be lit" or something yeah. like that. Dude, and they, his honestly, lawyer was probably like, yo, delete that shit, dumbass. It, that took two minutes. That was gone. In like two oh. minutes. But it's fucking hilarious because these guys, again, still to this day, I mean, just like six months ago, they were tweeting like the SEC come get me and stuff. And like, well, now you got got, you know, and it's like, it's just a the thing is, man, like uh, to me, this, this opens up an opportunity for everyone that wants to learn how to trade, to learn how to trade the right way, to make money betting against these clowns. And that's what we do every single day. And like, I always say that MIC is the best kept secret because like 
the reality is we sell hard work. We don't sell pump and dumps and we don't sell like uh, alerts. But there's going to be one day, man, that people just start to wake up and say, you know what, like this is actually the real deal. This is where I want to be if I want to be a trader. Because, dude, like I swear to God, I'm not even joking. Every time I go anywhere, 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 and anyone knows what I do, they're like, yo, I'm into the market. I do this and that. I'm like, I'm trying to get going, like whatever it is. Every single person I know wants to get into the market or is in the market and is looking for help. Every single person says they tried it on their own. They did this, they did that. And like, I think the market is there's, I've always said that there's two biggest ways to make money is real estate and stock market. And right now, real estate people have too much of a barrier to entry to get in because too much money. You at least need fucking tens of thousands of dollars, if not like 50 K to at least get something. Right. Um, so I think the stock market is always going to be around forever. I think the stock market is one of the best wealth generators ever. And I think that one day, bro, we're just going to wake up and people are going to realize that, Hey, this, these people have been here for a while. They've been helping for a while. They do things the right way. They don't scam. They don't alert. And, you know, I want to be able to learn how to become a professional trader from the Harvard of trading education. So yeah, I agree. I agree. And I think, I think right now the, the idea of the stock market's scary to so many people because it's like we've been getting – like the market itself has been getting wrecked. Uh, but once people kind of wake up and see like, hey, these guys have been like consistently like killing it for like years now. And it's like they're doing really well and like things are going great. So it's just – it takes time, man. It's all a cycle and eventually you – Who knows, bro? Maybe what we have to do is we have to do that because like the way we run things, guys – I mean like obviously you guys know, but for the people watching, the way we run things, there's no alerts, there's no pumps. There's nothing. It's pure education. We post our watch list 30 minutes before the market opens. And all we do is follow that pre-made plan. It's like if you want to bake cookies, you need a quarter a cup of milk. You need some chocolate chips. You need one yeah. egg. We give you the plan before we make the cookies. And all we got to do is follow the plan to make the cookies. And maybe what we have to do, guys, is as a, a way for people to realize is maybe they want alerts. Maybe we alert them to watch us every day so that they see what we're all about. I know it's a discussion that we've had internally, but yeah. I think that's going to be the next step is for people that want to get, you know, fed things. We'll feed you guys to watch us and you'll realize that 30 minutes before the market open, our plan is made. You guys will realize there's no front running. There's no follow the leader. There's nothing like that. And maybe after that, then you'll want to take trading seriously. Yeah, yeah. 100%. 100%. And I think... That's why, like, you know, we always make it a clear point that, like, we're actually trading something that's repeatable, too. It's not, like, 30 seconds into the into the day, we're not, we're, like, everyone's buying this shit. Like, that's not even remotely what we do. So, it's completely opposite. And when I explain that to people, they don't, they don't even understand it sometimes. And I'm, like, look, like, this is what we do. This is what I do. Like, you don't even have to trade the same shit, but you're here to learn and you're here to, to get you know, education and also like network with smart people. So this is a skill that lasts a lifetime, bro. Once you figure this shit out, the stock market is not going anywhere. You'll be able to eventually print money out of any country in the world, any place in the world, as long as you have an internet connection. Yeah. And speaking of the stock market, not going anywhere. I wanted to, uh, before we wrap up, I wanted to touch on uh, like CPI and some of the news we got yesterday. So uh, obviously we got a lower inflation print. It was at 7.2, which is funny because the stock market ripped even though 7.2 is dog shit and it yeah. means we are still 5% away from uh, Powell's goal of like 2%, yeah. which is probably aggressive. Um, and yesterday they raised rates. Uh, was it a half a point, right? Yeah, so, half a point, yeah. So they still raised. And he did signal that that potentially in 23, uh, they could be slowing rates, um, you know, and kind of stopping that and trying to aim towards his goal. But what do you guys think about everything that that kind of came out this week? I think they're just going to keep hiking until that he reaches his goal. I mean, that's really it. Like, I mean, he came out like, what was it? I don't know if it was last week or the week before, but came out and basically said like, oh, like we're thinking about slowing, like we're thinking about slowing and then hiked a half point. So, I mean, I think like uh, to me, like, I mean, 7% inflation shit. The only tool they have is is really for the most part to hike those interest rates so he's just going to keep doing that i mean they don't really have a choice that's the only tool in their fucking toolbox like you know most traders have like a wrench a hammer and like <laughs> whatever tools a screwdriver you have this dude just has a fucking hammer so he's just going to use that you know um and that's yeah. really about it i mean there's not really much else they can do so I have a hard time believing that they're going to slow rates when, you know, that's the only tool he has, you know? Yeah. I, um, 
I don't see a world where we get anywhere near like two to three percent inflation within the next like couple of years. I just don't see it. Probably um, I don't see it. I feel like we're probably going to sit at a, a hyperinflation, whether it's just sits at like five percent or even a little higher for multiple years. And I think we're just going to have high rates, high inflation for a while uh, until it all breaks. And I think like Alex, you mentioned in the past, like something needs to break before things can really change. And That's I exactly what I was going to say, bro. I was going to yeah. say they're going to keep going until something fucking breaks. And their magic tool they have, they have one more tool, Harry. Their magic tool is the money printer. Oh, yes. Gonna, yes, yes, yes. They're going to keep going until something breaks and they're going to save us by printing money. That's it. That's all it is. They're yeah. going to break shit until they start the cycle again. That's oh, it. The bro. hammer and, and the, the printer. Again. The hammer and the printer. I forgot. That's all it is, bro. They're going to break it until they come and say, guys, I'm here to fix you. I'm here to fix it. I'm going to I'll give you a stimulus. We're going to be fine. Don't worry. Uber and just went bankrupt, but we're going to see That's what I'm that. waiting for. Don't I'm worry. waiting for a domino that's huge. Like something that's so out of the blue, like fucking Tesla. <laughs> Some crazy ass. Bro, it has, it's going to be something that like no one fucking expects. Like FTX, no one expected that shit. And yeah. I don't know it what just the fuck wasn't it. close enough to home. No, I think that was a gift. I think that was a gift to everything that they collapsed. Because I don't even think, I don't think anybody knew about that shit. It just happened. But there will be a yeah. company. And it's it's a perfect storm right now for the Federal Reserve because, right, so we have the House and the Senate are split. So they're not going to be printing any more crazy money um, through, you know, policy. But the Federal Reserve can print. They have their own narrative and they have their own mandate, which is 2 to 3% inflation and try to get lower interest rates. So they're going to, like you said, we're gonna, they're going to keep pushing and pushing and then eventually something will break. Something's going to break, bro. Something's going to break. Something's yeah. going to break. And when it breaks, that break signal that gap down that flush is that buy that yeah. is the signal that is the signal yeah and i mean everyone says it all the time like i follow a lot of really interesting people on twitter that talk about this and they're just saying how this whole time as crazy and volatile as it been like you get the vix no one's afraid no one's afraid because nothing crazy has happened we've gotten like news of you know some layoffs economic slowing i think that we're gonna have it's gonna continue like this until 23 and then we're going to start seeing the corporate earnings come out from these massive companies and are going to say, wait a second, the holidays were kind of shit this year. Spending was lower. Uh, people are starting now to fall behind yeah. on uh, payments. I mean, I posted, we were talking the other morning about how like credit cards and stuff and like people are still very caught up and people have been spending money, but I think we're going to start seeing that change really quickly in, in delinquencies and, and people just lower savings and all yeah. that shit. Bro, everyone that I know that has money is not trying to spend money right now. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. I dude, man, I fucking went out to dinner last night. I went two nights ago. I went out to dinner. It was two hundred bucks. It was nothing. We ate at some chain restaurant and it was shit. It was two hundred dollars. That's why I'm like, I don't want to spend money anymore. Anyone with any sort of money has smartened up and realized it's just a waste. It's a waste to go out and do it right now. So, but people who have less will continue to spend. They'll continue to blow money. I mean, I went Christmas shopping the other day. I see people maxing out credit cards at Louis Vuitton, doing crazy bullshit. So it's just. That will continue and that cycle will happen. And then, like we said, it'll break and then we'll be ready to kind of move into the next cycle. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. That's the big I thing. think that's it, guys. So, what yeah. we'll do is in the description, we'll put all the, uh, the lawsuits, the information, and everything so you guys can kind of decipher for yourself. Everything we said is for in, uh, entertainment purposes only. Yeah. This is not our opinions or these are our only sole opinions. These are not backed by anything other than comedy. So don't try to sue us because we have too much money and you won't win. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll end it on that. I love that disclaimer. My opinion's right. back by FTT. <laughs> yeah, my opinion's <laughs> back. <laughs> <You> motherfucker. <laughs>